Well, the interim leader is actually the speaker who's actually only been in the job for two days. He was uh, boated in once this whole uh, change of power started to happen in the parliament. So he now has a much higher responsibility until the election. So he's only in until the 25th of May. And, uh, of course, now, technically, if, depending how uh, the constitutional lawyers look at it, we have two presidents. Uh, because Viktor Yanukovych said yesterday, and it was 24 hours ago, that he was still the legitimate leader of this country and that what had happened here was actually a coup. But he hasn't been seen or heard of for the last 24 hours and uh, now obviously the authorities here want to get him. They want to arrest him, no doubt. And they don't know where he is. He's probably either in Donetsk, which is a, a stronghold for him and a place where he would find shelter because he has lots of friends there, or perhaps he's already out of the country, perhaps he's in Russia, for example, or Belarus, uh, maybe. Uh, but we don't know where he is. What we do know is that the transition from his administration to this new administration is going at a pace. The foreign minister was fired today. He was a Yanukovych uh, supporter. Uh, and so by the, in the next couple of days, there will be a government uh, that uh, other people can deal with. Catherine Ashton from the EU is going to visit uh, in uh, a few hours' time. And she will no doubt bring news perhaps of uh, or promises of financial aid. And that's going to be crucial to the survival of uh, this administration, to the survival of the country, because it's in dire economic straits. It had been bailed out by the Russians, but now all this has happened. The Russians are not going to be sinking money into an administration uh, they uh, regard uh, as illegitimate. So it's an extraordinary situation still here, but we're still in this process of moving into the new reality. Now, another figure serving as a lightning rod, a positive lightning rod over the weekend, is Yulia Tymoshenko, of course, the former Prime Minister, jailed by Viktor Yanukovych. She has been released, much to public acclaim. Yes, very much so, but that must be tempered a little by some scepticism. After all, she was the Prime Minister at a, a tumultuous time, and she is, in a sense, part of the old order, part of the old politics. So while, yes, she was welcome to the stage here, and she came straight from the stage uh, to, uh, to the, from her prison cell uh, to a potential president in a, in a matter of hours, uh, even though that has happened and she got a good reception, there are still many people talking and saying, well, yes, I'm not sure about her. Some people simply don't like her, never have liked her. So she's not a shoe-in for the president, but she's certainly a very serious contender. She has the economic resources to do it. She's a very, very wealthy woman. Uh, but whether this nation will accept her, we'll have to wait and see. What everyone talks about when you go down to the square is, we're sick of the way things are. We don't trust any of them. We don't like any of them. Uh, and we want new ways of doing things. We want honest ways of doing things. Uh, and so it may, in fact, be the opportunity for a clean skin to come in. Now, would uh, Vitaly Klitschko, the, the former world champion boxer, uh, classify as that? I don't know, but he's certainly thrown his hat into the ring. He says he will be uh, vying for the presidency in May. He's the first one to officially declare. And finally, Phil, we hear what we hope and what we assume are fireworks there behind you. Uh, it's still fairly calm on the street after the violence of the recent week and a bit. Yes, very much so. Uh, it's been a funny mixture, really, uh, of celebration. We just heard the fireworks, but when you go in, down into that square at night time and during the daytime, as I have, uh, very emo highly emotionally charged people have got these memorials everywhere to the dead. And uh, I just walked up through the square here, and everywhere you go are these little candles creating little pathways through the through the square and tens of thousands of flowers, tens of thousands also of candles burning. It's quite a, uh, an evocative scene. And people stand there, they contemplate, they cry, uh, because they recognise that any achievements, any political achievements that have been made here have been made, they say, because of the bloodshed uh, just a couple of days ago. And it's, it's hard to remind yourself that just literally three days ago, police were shooting uh, protesters. They were shooting unarmed protesters. They were gunning them down in the street and I saw them from my, with my own eyes. Now, a different reality, a different government, uh, a different Ukraine. 
but still one that is potentially divided because in the East, Many people are still furious about what's happened. They want to stick with Russia. They don't want to go with the EU. And in fact, today there was some very ugly scenes in one uh, town in the Crimea where there was a, a bunch of protesters who were supporting the people here in, in Kiev, wanted to commemorate a local man who died in the protests. And, in, and as they were doing that, they were attacked by groups of uh, pro-Russian uh, activists and beaten rather severely, one man particularly beaten rather severely. So these, these kind of fractures are, are perhaps one of the major challenges of whoever ends up the Prime Minister, whether that's, whether that's uh, uh, Vitaly uh, Klitschko or perhaps Timoshenko, whoever it is, is going to inherit a whole heap of problems, binding the country together, getting the economy together, getting rid of corruption. It's an enormous job.